Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel here on We The Dreamers. I'm Kate and today I'm excited to talk about how to reset your home and your headspace for the new year. So this video is gonna be all about how to reclaim your space and your sanity so that you can feel refreshed and reset and renewed before the new year starts so you can really kick it off feeling ready to go. First things first, I wanted to mention that if you, like me, use Notion to organize your life, we actually made a free Notion template to go along with this video that includes a worksheet that'll help you work through all these four steps of this new year reset and it's a really great companion to this video so head to the link in the description to get your free four-step reset notion template you can copy the template into your own notion and follow along there or if you don't use notion honestly you can totally just follow along in a notebook or in any other app or system that you like to use this is something i only recently started doing in the month of december because i noticed that january would roll around and i would kind of wait to start figuring out what I wanted to reset for the next year until January. And personally for me, then I felt like I was already behind when January rolled around and people started sending emails again and things started to get busy. And all of a sudden I was sitting there trying to reset my life and trying to feel refreshed and feeling like I was already behind. So I like to try to steal away a couple of days to carve out some time to really set myself up and put together sort of a plan of action to reset so that when January rolls around, I'm already feeling ready to go. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I do to get in the spirit of a clean slate is to do a high level tidy of the most high traffic spots in my house. So I just put things back, straighten up whatever is lingering around, try to clear off the countertops, that pile of holiday cards that we love to receive, but we all know very well that everyone just puts those in a pile and then waits until it's time to just throw them away or recycle them. That's kind of, kind of what holiday cards are. But basically I've found that in order to get in the spirit of a reset, even just clearing off the kitchen counters or windexing my glass coffee table and just picking up clothes, putting them back, doing the laundry, rehanging stuff in my closet that I've been too lazy to get on the ladder and rehang can give me a whole new lease on life and make me feel better about the process of digging in and getting more things done. Side note, if you're having trouble finding the motivation to get going on any of this resetting business, you can check out our recent podcast episode all about how to find motivation when you're feeling stuck or burned out or overwhelmed. There's some really great tips in there. So I took a couple days during this slow, quiet season to scrub the floors, do the laundry, water the plants, and refresh the pillows on the couch, kind of just rearrange things that were hanging around the house. And whenever I can, I like to really try to make a ritual out of this process. So I'll put on a new playlist that I'm excited about. Or, you know, if you're doing this before the new year and you're into holiday music, you can kind of bump your favorite holiday tunes and, you know, listen to some holiday music to get in the spirit. Light one of your favorite candles, you know, try to make it something that really does feel like a ritual. One thing for me that I've noticed really helps me actually relax is watering my plants, even though I procrastinate it and love to put it off and, you know, dread doing it. But once I'm in the midst of doing it, I actually feel really calm and peaceful. So the more that you can kind of make this high level tidy feel like a ritual, you know, and make it enjoyable, I think that for me really helps me to get in the mood of getting ready to reset. This is something I also like to do on a digital level too, like for my life, resetting my life. I like to change the background on my phone or change the background on my computer. I tend to make vision boards and kind of like try to have a different little collage of images that inspire me on my desktop background. Every season, I like to do that. And so this is a good time if you're wanting to get into the spirit of resetting, it can kind of really help jumpstart that reset to, you know, refresh your digital life too. So now that your surroundings are a little less chaotic, you can move on to step number two, which is to take an audit of different areas of your home and your life and ask yourself what's working and what's not working. So for me personally, it's easier to start with taking an audit of my physical space and the different areas of my home than it is to take an audit of my personal habits, productivity systems, stuff like that. So I start by going to different areas of my house, particularly the high traffic ones, the things that we use the most often, and identify what's working and what's not working. As an example, in the laundry kitchen area of our home, which is all kind of one combined space because it's a small house, we initially had bought this laundry basket, this cute like rolling laundry basket that lives in the corner that we thought, okay, this is where we're gonna put all of our laundry when it's time to, you know, 
do our laundry and I was like all excited about how this cute little rolling laundry basket was gonna live in the corner and then we would roll it over to the washing machine when it was time to do laundry. But three years later, we've found that we just don't use it. We tend to put our dirty clothes in the hampers that live in our bedroom and that's just what we do and we're probably not gonna change that habit. So right now, that laundry basket is sitting empty in the corner invaluable space honestly that in a small house we could really use that space for storage of something else like all the cookware that's piled up on our stovetop and so that's something that I'm gonna put on my list of this isn't working I need to find a different solution I like to take it room by room and really audit each area you know if you're like me you probably want to keep a database in something like notion or Google Docs or just a notebook whatever works best for you I like to use notion to have like a whole hub of notes about each area of my home and the things that I eventually want to address so I like to keep links to different things that I want to save up for, like a new vacuum or, you know, a, a new piece of cookware for the, the kitchen that I feel like we need. And I, I like to keep all of that in one place so that I can refer back to it like throughout the year and figure out what it is I want to work on next. And now is a great time to either create that database or update it. So I'll go through and be like, oh wow, actually we did end up figuring out, you know, how to organize that drawer. I don't need to have that on there anymore. Or I'll add something new. Like for instance, one of the huge pain points that I think is gonna be a big priority for me next year is our pantry. You may have seen our DIY bifold door makeover video where we took a boring white louvered bifold door and turned it into a really cute cane closet door for our pantry area. Love the door, it's been working out great, but the inside of the pantry is a complete mess and sort of always has been, which is why we wanted to cover it up with the door in the first place. Well, now I feel like I really want to figure out and address how to use that space in a way that really works for us. Basically, I figured out that the way we're storing all of our pantry food items is completely all over the place in totally different parts of the kitchen and it really doesn't work very well for us. So that's high on my list of things that aren't working. Be on the lookout for a major pantry organization video coming very soon. So once you've had a chance to take an audit of all the different areas of your home that feel like they could use some love or have some issues that need addressing at some point, you can extend this process to take an audit of the different areas of your life and your personal productivity, habits or systems that you're using and take an audit of what's working and what's not working there so that you can identify the areas of your life where you want to make improvements in the new year. As an example, one system or habit that's currently working really well for me when I kind of take an audit and look back is my financial budgeting system. I implemented this a couple years back and I use an app called You Need a Budget or YNAB for short not sponsored but definitely hit me up YNAB would love to collab and it has really changed my life like quite literally it has changed my life um getting things organized on the financial front was on the top of my list of things that I needed to address that that things that weren't working a couple years ago because I had always had a really hard time figuring out how to best manage my finances. And so once I implemented YNAB, it really was something that I was hopeful would help me out. And now like looking back at the end of the year, I realized, okay, that system is working. That's awesome. By the way, let me know in the comments if you guys would ever be interested in seeing a video about how I organize my finances with YNAB. I would love to make a video about that if that's something you're interested in. On the other hand, an example of something that's definitely not working for me in my life, sort of in the systems productivity hemisphere is my weekly planning routine or lack thereof. I really don't have a weekly planning routine and I have tried really hard to figure out how to implement one and have not yet been successful at figuring it out. I have a great dashboard that I built inside of Notion where I have all of my current projects and things that I wanna get done, but I don't yet have a good intake system for ingesting those to-do list items into that dashboard. So that's why I feel scatterbrained a lot of the time and it's something that I really feel like is the number one thing I want to address. So that brings me to step three of this new year reset, which is to go through your list of all the different areas of your home and different areas of your life Go through your list of the things that aren't working and pick one thing in each area, each area of your house, each area of your life, pick one thing from each category that's gonna be your priority for the new year. So I tend to be somebody who can get really discouraged and overwhelmed if I can't take care of 
every single thing that I want to get done in a certain area of my home or my life, but I'm telling you, it's a recipe for overwhelm and failure because it's literally not possible. And if you think about how you're gonna get it all done at once, then it's gonna be really hard to break it down and start with the things that are the most essential. So pick one thing from each category and make it the priority. And then if you want, you can rank the other ones in order of priority below that. That sometimes helps me to say, okay, I'm not abandoning these things, but they are on the back burner until I get this one done. Okay, so we've defined our priorities in each area of our home and our lives. Now that we have our priorities, we can move on to step four, which is to go through each of those priorities in each area and write down the first three tiny steps you would need to take to work toward addressing those pain points. So for example, my number one priority in the productivity habits part of my life is to find a weekly planning routine that works for me. So what would the first three tiny steps I could take look like in order to get to a place where I can find that routine? Well, number one, I would need to take a high level look at what my weeks typically look like and identify what day of the week would make it easiest for me to carve out a half an hour, 45 minutes for planning. And I'm saying a half hour, 45 minutes because Weekly planning probably won't take me that long, but I'll need to carve out that much time in order to actually be sure that I sit down and get it done. Because if I'm overly ambitious and say, okay, it's just gonna take me 10 minutes, I'm never gonna take that 10 minutes to do it. Tiny step number two would be to define what time of day I'm gonna try to have this weekly planning meeting with myself and where I'm gonna try to have that weekly planning meeting. So I could say, okay, I am gonna try this weekly planning meeting at 10 a.m. on Mondays and I'm gonna try to do it at my desk on my desktop computer and that's what I'm gonna try first. I'm saying try first because I'm almost certain that I will need to adjust this. And sometimes if I leave myself room for flexibility, it makes me feel less anxious that if I don't do it perfectly at 10 a.m. on a Monday at my studio desk that like it's not the end of the world. Tiny step number three would be to add 10 a.m. weekly planning meeting with myself for 45 minutes at my studio desk to my Google Calendar and add a notification so that I have no excuse. It's going to pop up for me every week on Monday and I'm going to see that and I am going to be more motivated to sit down and actually do this weekly planning meeting with myself. So these three steps aren't the whole process. That's not the entire big picture of what's going to solve my problem once and for all of having a hard time planning my weeks out. They're just the three tiny next steps that are the right steps to take in order to make some progress. One of the things I'm trying really hard to focus on for the coming year is just to advance. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to solve every problem. It doesn't mean that I'm going to succeed with flying colors at everything, but I'm moving the ball down the field, right? I'm advancing at it. So that's the goal right now in this step is just to define the, try to make them the tiniest possible steps that you can think of, the three tiny next steps to work towards addressing those pain points in your home and in your life that currently aren't working for you. Like for my pantry project, for instance, it's a much bigger project. It's gonna involve a lot more steps and a lot more energy than finding a time for my weekly planning routine. So those tiny next steps would probably look like, number one, take inventory of everything that I eventually want to store in that pantry and get a sense of how much space that stuff is gonna take up and how much I can realistically expect to store in there. So that might mean just taking out all the cans of food, all of the sauce and the random stuff and the snacks and take the things out of the random places that they're living in right now in the kitchen and put them all on the floor and just look at the volume of stuff. And then take a look at the pantry, figure out, you know, how much do I really think that I can fit in there? How much of this stuff is going to realistically live in that space? That's step number one, because that is gonna be something that's gonna get me to the place where now I can plan out what the storage is gonna look like in there. Tiny step number two would be like, take measurements of those items, you know, literally figure out how tall is a can of soup? How tall is a box of cereal? You know, how much space am I gonna need to leave between shelves in the pantry? you know, so that the stuff that I wanna store in there actually fits. And then tiny step number three would probably be coming up with a plan for the stuff that is currently living in the pantry. What's my plan for that stuff? The stuff that's gonna get kicked out of the pantry so that I can store all of my food items. Like, 
For instance, we store a box that has all different kinds of tape in the pantry. Am I gonna put the tape in the garage with the tools or is it going to live you know, in my office? Just kind of defining where I'm going to put the stuff that is currently in this closet, because it's a random array of stuff, where is that stuff that's gonna be displaced going to live after this? Those are three tiny steps that are by no means going to fix my pantry all on their own, but they'll get me started. They'll get me motivated. They'll help me start chipping away at the issue so that once I complete these, it'll become clearer, okay, now what are the next tiny three steps? Sometimes for me, I'm someone who's very ADHD, I have a tough time with executive function, and it really helps me to break things down and only focus on those tiny three steps. And then once those are done, the, the, the way becomes clearer. It starts to clear out and you start to be able to see, okay, I can see now what the next hurdle is. So now that you've done a high level tidy of your space, you've taken an audit of different areas of your home and your life to find out what's working and what's not, and you've defined your priorities and figured out which of those items that aren't working you're going to focus on first. And you've also spelled out three tiny next steps to take for each of those pain points in order to work towards resolving them. You can go into the new year feeling refreshed and reset and most importantly, like you have a plan. I think we love the idea of resetting so much because it's just this sense of having a clean slate of kind of getting rid of all the cobwebs in your physical space and in your head space and being able to look at things from a 30,000 foot view and say, what is it here that is working for me? What is it that's not working for me? And how can I get to a place where I can find solutions for the things that aren't working? How can I make these spaces in my home and these systems in my life work better for me so that I feel happier in my home and more peaceful and so that I feel more content with my productivity systems and my habits in my life so that I have more time for the things that I care about and that I enjoy and I'm not, you know, spinning my wheels like tripping over a bunch of clutter and looking everywhere for the coconut milk and trying to figure out how I can actually, you know, sit down and write down all the stuff I have to do this week. I think a lot of times a reset is just about zooming out a little taking inventory of your space and your life, because I don't know about you guys, but the state of my home and my physical space is usually related to the state of my mental well-being, my headspace. And so usually if my home feels chaotic and disorganized, then my mind feels chaotic and disorganized, and that's never fun. So I think that that's really what we're looking for with a reset is just being able to zoom out and find a clean slate so that we can move forward in the new year and really know what it is that we care about, know what it is that we're working towards and have a plan of action so that we can start chipping away at those things and improving our lives. So I'd love to hear from all of you. I'd love to know what your favorite techniques are for feeling refreshed for whether it's a new year or just a new season or honestly we can refresh and reset any time of the year it does not have to be just for the new year so i'd love to hear what your favorite techniques are and what kind of things you do in order to feel like you have a clean slate and a plan of action to go into your next season feeling refreshed and ready to go. Don't forget to grab your free four-step reset notion template at the link in the description and let me know if you would like to see more free notion template type things in the future as a companion to some of our videos. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for more videos about designing your life and designing your home, about just living well in your physical space and in your head space. I think that's really what we're all about and please let us know in the comments like what kind of topics you'd love to see us tackle next. We love hearing from you all so so hope you have an amazing, refreshed new year and we'll see you in the next video.